North Carolina. 175,000 racing fans are on hand to watch stuntman Brian Carson attempt a record-setting jump. To be successful, he has to hit the ramp at over 100 miles an hour and leap over four flatbed trucks, each packed with explosives that are rigged to erupt in a wall of fire. Then he must land precariously on the red X atop these shock-absorbing stunt cars. In all, the distance he must travel is 250 feet. Brian is ready. A camera mounted inside his car captures a dramatic angle just as he punches the gas on his final approach. But there's big trouble. Brian's jump is well short of the mark, leaving him trapped inside the mangled wreckage. As soon as the car left the ramp, I knew I was in trouble. I knew it. I feel something was wrong. The car angled the wrong way. I knew the suspension broke somewhere. Brian's car plunges through the gigantic wall of bursting flames. But instead of hitting the landing mark, he nosedives directly into an explosive charge. I landed face first, engine first, right in this pyro mortar that was blasting off 100 pounds of explosives right in my face. That's like throwing a dart 100 feet into it and hitting a dime. You couldn't do it. The force of the explosion and the crushing impact leave Brian fighting for his life. It takes emergency crews 40 minutes to pry him from the car. I was pinned, uh, my foot was pinned, part of the car had caved in on me, uh, my left arm was shattered, broken, I was in a, a fog, it was, it was a bad scene. Somehow Brian survives the deadly stunt gone wrong. In his line of work, the daredevil knows that there's no way to predict when a disaster like this might happen. All you can do is make your best calculations on the stunt, and then hang on and hopefully it'll all work out on the other side. Although the stunt didn't go as planned, at least Brian made it out. Alive. Evansville, Indiana. Responding to an urgent call, police officers arrive at a church parking lot. What they find is baffling. A car is circling the lot backwards and without a driver. Apparently a woman churchgoer thought she'd left the car in park mode, but she'd actually left it in reverse. See, and then when she stepped out, the car knocked her down and started doing circles in reverse in the parking lot. Luckily, the woman isn't hurt, but the police still have to deal with a very serious problem. How do they pull over an unmanned car? The tank is full, and at this rate, it'll take at least three and a half days for the vehicle to run out of petrol. After careful consideration, the cops devise a bold strategy. Officer Tony Hartwick approaches the car from inside the circle and smashes the rear window with a crowbar. Then Officer Joe Frazier steps in to try and unlock the door. But the lock won't budge. After several unsuccessful attempts, Frazier is breathless and calls it quits. That's when Hartwick takes over, but he still can't get the door open, so he comes up with another plan. Hartwick climbs onto the roof and slowly inches his way towards the open door. Then the brave cop tries to lower himself into the driver's seat. Finally, he does it. Hartwick stops the car, removes the keys, and breathes a huge sigh of relief. <laughs> These veteran cops thought they'd seen it all, but this low-speed chase through a church car park is one they'll never forget. In 13 years, this is the wildest ride I've had.
left the ramp. I knew I was in trouble. I really said that.